Okay. okay, here we have Ramel from Race in Black, very popular industrial band. And, it's news uh, to me. <laughs> he just did a few uh, cool shows for us, and so we're doing an interview for VampireFreaks.com. So, Ramel, um, how long have you been doing Race in Black for? Mm. Signed in 96 to Cleopatra Records. And what's funny about that is um, in 2006, the label called and asked um, if we want to do a, a, a re release of the first album. And I was like, why? You know? Cause yeah. I just, you know and uh, because he said it was 10 years, and that's what made me realize that the oh, first cool. album was released in 2006. And uh, I was just like, thanks for making me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> so you, your uh, latest work seems to be more uh, kind of electronic, form for dance oriented. And um, would you say that's more of the direction you're going to be going in for the future also? Maybe, I don't know. Like the whole reason why that happened was because I've been DJing a lot. Um, so and clubbing and going to raves, you know, back when raves were raves. Yeah. And uh, so it just sort of was a progression. When I write, I don't really think about how it's going to sound. It just comes out the way it is. Like I usually start with vocals or like a concept or something like that. And um, however, the way I feel best um, represent what I'm trying to say is how it comes out. So naturally, like the elements that I'm influenced um, will come out that way. Like if I'm listening to a lot of trance, of course, yeah. you know, um, inevitably it will just come out. But um, it's never an intentional thing. I don't ever go like, okay, I'm gonna make a, a breaks track, you know, or something like that. I'm gonna do like an industrial song. It just happens. Uh -huh. And what's cool about the scene um, is that whatever we do, it's still embraced because the goth industrial scene is sort of a conglomeration of all the electronic music. Right? Yeah. And that's what, what I appreciate as a musician. Yeah, I, th I think the progression of your style, it's, it's actually been kind of going along with the progression of uh, what people have been more into into the scene, so that's been really cool as well. So, um, what have you been working on lately? Tons of remixes, as usual. Uh, yeah, tribute tracks. I, I should be working on a new album, which I am slowly, but every so often, or more often than not, something comes to my table which kind of takes me away from it. Uh, but it's in there, you know. So. Yeah. So, like, anything you'd like to share about the next album? Nothing yet. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But everything comes from here, so. Oh. Uh, yeah, it'll always be that way. And I think that's how it should always be. Yeah. So how's your experience with live shows? Like any like particularly memorable experiences? Every single one. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, there's always something to take away from, and there's always a new experience. Like uh, what was it? The first, the first show of this leg was with uh, Audio Lust, who are badass. By the way, I really, really. Herman and Slava, by the way, are the bomb. I'm going to work with you guys again. And that of course, you, Vampire Freaks. That was a cameo by DJ Audio Fowl. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, I mean, as, as some of you might know, like the New York show didn't, didn't work out because of, you know, unforeseen circumstances. So we actually ended up having a house party here that was crazy. It was off the chain. Yeah. You know, I haven't done that since, like, 1989 to play in a house. and. Um, it was, uh, you know, definitely a, a cool experience and a lot more fun than I expected. So, so looking forward to it. Looking forward to more. Not house parties. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to more with you guys. And, and so, yeah. So, uh, you grew up in Hawaii, right? Born and raised. So, how's that been like over there? Like, what's the scene like? What's it like growing up over there? Uh, I think a lot of people will be surprised that the scene is actually pretty good. Yeah. Like the, the um, Courtney, who runs, uh, who ran and started the dungeon in Hawaii, is actually the same Courtney who runs, who runs the dungeon in LA, which is, um, I guess, pretty 
nationwide popular, from what I understand and stuff. Uh -huh. And uh, the guys who perform with me are um, people that I grew up with, or are also from Hawaii. Also, like good friends of mine, like Connor over there. And, yeah. Danny and Phil and you know Ivan who's not here right now. But yeah. So it's like a big family. And uh, family in Hawaii is, is kind of a big thing, so it's like the brothers always going out. Cool. So um, how did you uh, get started into making music and get started into the whole industrial scene? How did I start? When I was a little kid I played piano classically trained. I um, picked up the guitar because I was a rocker when I was like 7th, 8th grade or something like that. And then I uh, um, always was into electronic music and then the progression was pretty much uh, inevitable mm -hmm. just because um, you could be more expressive. And then um, I think like most people in this scene there is always a dark side within you, like deep down inside. So that's sort of um, when I was, I don't know what it was exactly that kind of opened my eyes to the scene, but whenever and whatever that was, I knew that that was home. So that's pretty much how it all began, and that's how it is for me, for years, yeah. like everybody. Like you? Rob? Well, yeah, that's true. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming. <laughs> so, um... What, what would you say is something that's uh, unique about you that people wouldn't really know? What's unique about me? Or, you know, know, something that most people wouldn't really know about you. A lot of people don't know that um, I'm a hairstylist. Wow. That's I don't cool. know if you even knew that. Yeah, I don't Yeah, I got um, hooked up with Paul Mitchell, so I'm actually um, a Paul Mitchell stylist. And I'm like a national educator with them. And, um, like how, how bands get um, endorsed or, or supported with, with products, you know, like um, we actually have a Dean Guitars, um, well, support from Dean Guitars and um, Mesa Boogie, well, as a while ago, and, uh, and some other companies and whatnot. But um, there's a scissors company called Kenshi that um, sort of, how do you say? supports me as a stylist and stuff so really cool actually they make what was what's cool about them is they make these kind of these designs that are really gothic looking uh -huh. like they've got dragons and, and all kinds of things and, oh, sure. um, so uh, I think that was the appeal and uh, when we when we met the, the owners of the company and myself uh, I think right away we had that connection because we already had that um, Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Um, I guess that would be one of the things that most people don't know. So, uh, one of your more popular songs, "Oh My God." Tell me, uh, well, tell me a little bit about that song. Like, what's the lyrics about, and uh, you know, what's the song about, really? Well, if you listen to this, if you listen to the lyrics, it's pretty obvious what it's about oh. and stuff. But what there is a little story behind it um, that kind of came after. I mean, oh my God, is a saying that everyone says. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. anything that anyone invented, really. It's something that people said, and I just thought it was kind of cute. And what the when I was when I wrote the song, it just felt so right, you know, and uh, to use that as a chorus. But uh, um, Voltaire, who's actually a good friend of mine now. Uh, heard the song. I didn't know about his comic, you know, which yeah. is excellent. And uh, yeah. uh, we sort of, uh, I guess at the time, when when he discovered the track and I discovered this thing, you know, we were like, hey, what's going on? And, hey, I didn't know you got you came up with a comic and then we get the song. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then later on, I found out that there is um, like a clothing store and then, um, a clothing line, I believe, called Long So yeah. It's kind of cool. Cool in the sense that um, I never really thought that anyone else, not that I came up with it or anything, but that it was that used, utilized, not just as a saying, but uh, more than that. So, so uh, tell me about Cleopatra Records. Like, how's, 
how how you work out with them? Like, how's your relationship with them? Pretty good, actually. I mean, they've been they're the first label that I signed to, so they've been sort of the family since then. Yeah. But um, as like most fans, I mean, uh, ten years on the label, it's always time to move to a new house. So yeah. um, probably after the next. The next album, I'll, I'll probably jump to someone else. Uh -huh. No plans yet. No, I haven't even given it any thought where. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's like um, like moving, buying a new car. That's cool. Kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, that uh, sounds like you know we could look into that. It seems like they're more into like the more traditional goth music. It seems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> that's cool. Well, thanks a lot, Romel. It's been great. Thank you. You know, thanks a lot for doing the interview. Thank and you. Um, there you go, Ramel from Raised in Black. <laughs>